wrote the best German novel of the year? We met up with the six finalists and asked them to tell us about their stories. The winner will be announced on October 7th. Six authors, six books competing for recognition as the best novel of 2013. The stories this year are gloomy, from melancholy to insanity, death and ruination. The dark depths of the soul are illuminated. Mirko Bonet's novel, Nie Nacht, which means Never Again Night, is about disappearing, dissolution and absence. I didn't want everything to be explicable, everything secured, so that nothing could happen to you. This is the story of an escape attempt. A man takes his adolescent nephew along to Normandy, on France's Atlantic coast. A magazine has commissioned him to draw a bridge that played a crucial role in the Allies' landing on D-Day in 1944. Of course, it's also a symbolic image. All the bridges in Marcus Lee's life have collapsed or been torn down. The protagonist's sister recently took her own life. So he flees from his grief and from a secret. I think Marcus Lee is afraid of life, of being touched by life, by other people, and especially by women, because he's had a disastrous love life. Falling in love with your own sister is not a perfect situation. Author Mirko Bonet interweaves a private and historical tragedy. A road novel about scars in the psyche and in the landscape. The earth, almost a paradise. No wars, no violence. Just peaceful, semi-conscious people. That's how our planet looks in the 25th century in Reinhard Jögel's book entitled Nichts from euch auf Erden which means nothing of you on Earth. If I understand what I wrote in my book, then it's not really science fiction, nor a utopian novel, nor a dystopia. It's a game. On this playing field, the powerful have long since resettled on Mars, where they live in underground cities. The weak are put in work camps, where they are exploited for the dream of making the surface of the red planet inhabitable. In this most inhospitable alien landscape, people repeat what they've already done on Earth, increasing their human bestiality, using science and technology to develop the most horrible mutual terror. Their greed demands more slaves, more human material. So the Martians return to Earth, and that's the beginning of the dramatic end. Reinhard Jögel lets our illusions of being special explode in the cosmos. If you'd asked the dinosaurs 60 million years ago whether they could imagine life going on after them, they would have said impossible. But as we see, life goes on wonderfully without them. At the conclusion of this stormy text, only books remain. Living books that continue writing themselves and no longer need people to read them. The woman who calls herself Bobsy could be waiting behind one of these windows for her next customer, as she does every day from 10 a.m. till 10 p.m. Mandy works in a bar. Bobsy and Mandy both offer sex for money. I don't care much about sex. Never have. I guess I always had the wrong type of guy when I look back on it all. Just one time, when I was 18, there was a guy who was always very tender to me, but it didn't last long. In Clemens Meyer's novel Im Stein, which means in stone, Mandy is one of many voices telling stories of the street, the night and lost illusions. Of old and young women who earn a little on the side and those who are forced into prostitution. And of the men who use these women. I never wanted to write a novel about the sex trade, but one that was about a lot more. One that starts in the red light district, but then expands into something larger. 
Imstein portrays Leipzig in the 1990s, when West Germans thought they could strike it rich in the East with real estate and prostitution. They dreamt of the jackpot. Most of them ended up losers. You live, have fun and die. Maybe that's how it's always been. But these days it seems like everything's been greatly accelerated. Imstein. People living their lives, walled up within stone. A dark view of our times. On his long journey across Europe, Darius Kopp carries the urn containing his wife's ashes. We know him from Theresia Murat's last novel, in which he was a computer specialist. An indecisive man drifting along in life. Now Murat has written a sequel, Das Ungeheuer, which means the monster. Darius Kopp's task in Das Ungeheuer is to achieve and maintain an inner state he has never had before, namely to become a complete adult. Darius's rushed departure is an escape. His wife Flora has committed suicide. Where should he bury her? His journey takes him to Hungary, her home country, and through half of southeastern Europe. He encounters people from her past and is greatly affected by reading Flora's diary, which he found after her death. We read her diary along with Darius's travel descriptions, and we realize before he does that Flora was trapped in a dark parallel world. She was emotionally ill. He walks, she walks, and it seems as if they were walking together, but in reality they each walked alone. Flora withdrew into a shell, moving into a hut in the woods, until she saw no way out. Depression was a monster that destroyed her. Darius realizes this only after her death. Not even the author knows how this story will continue, but she plans to tell more tales about her sad protagonist. The sun crumbles. In the refectory, heavy footsteps make everything vibrate and plaster falls from the ceiling. Die Sonnenposition, or the position of the sun, is set in a mental hospital in a dilapidated East German castle. Psychiatrist Alfred Janich from the Rhineland works here after the fall of communism. He treats so-called victims of the turnaround, who can't adjust to the new system. His job is to take the position of the sun for his patients, to be the center of their universe and provide stability and orientation. In his free time, Alfred and his friend Odilo photograph the twilight test drives of secret car prototypes. After Odilo's mysterious death, the psychiatrist's life comes apart at the seams. Repressed traumas surface from the darkest chapters of German history. From the viewpoint of the war's grandchildren, Marianne Poschmann writes about the shadows of the past that follow the West German Altfried into the castle in the east. I wanted to pursue the question whether World War II still has effects today and whether they are visible. I can't answer this question with my book, but I can address it. A novel about the fragility of our lives, full of subtle humor. It is soon clear that Alfred will never leave the sanatorium. A pianist in Berlin and a doctor in Naples. A concert tour brings Tom and Betty together again after many years. Memories are aroused of times together in a jazz band, and of Mark, who was Betty's boyfriend and Tom's friend. In her debut novel, Die Ordnung der Sterne über Como, which means The Order of the Stars Above Lake Como, Monika Zeiner depicts a love triangle that begins in Berlin in the 1990s. As the great novelist Robert Musil put it, Berlin was a place where everything was possible and one could do anything, but where one didn't have to do anything. Monika Zeiner herself came to Berlin from the provinces in the early 1990s. She wrote her doctoral dissertation on love and melancholy in literary history. 
on the creative and destructive power of Eros. That interested me, and I wanted to transpose it to our own times, especially because the main character is such a melancholic. The artistic trio is happy until Tom falls in love with Betty, and Betty is unfaithful to Mark with Tom, who is Mark's best friend. Shortly thereafter, Mark dies in an accident. Why do we cheat on our partners? How much love can a friendship withstand? Monika Zeina asks some existential questions. Where are the things we no longer remember? Mark had asked him long ago. Where are the things we do remember, thought Tom. Love and Philosophy, a novel about the pain of growing up. The six finalists for the German Book Prize. David, I never expected to see you. 